Urging you to stay home, sanitize your hands and packages frequently. It'll only take two weeks to flatten the curve on monkeypox. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The choice is going to mandate get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grand? That's right. And Bald Brian. Hey, hey, hey. Jonathan Kite is in studio. <clears throat> you know him from his many appearances on this show, and uh, you also know him from uh, Two Broke Girls, and you know him from his stand-up appearances. And speaking of that, he's going to be at the Comedy Club of Kansas City, Gina. All right. Coming up June 2nd through the 4th, and his uh, website, jonathankitecomedy.com. Good to see you, Jonathan. Thanks for having me, bud. I uh, had a funny experience with Jonathan because we were doing stand-up uh, last Friday, and uh, we just ended up at the same club at Ha Ha's, I believe. I in love the, that uh, place, San Fernando Valley. I'm not home. sure what's the love about it, but uh, I like so it. Be it. I have fondness in my heart for that place. Uh, I'd never been in there. Oh. I'd, I'd grew up in the valley, and I'd built the theater on Lancashire and NoHo and been all up and down there a million times and I'd never been asked to do a, a show there. But uh, Jonathan was there. And then so there's a little green room backstage. And uh, then the sort of DJ producer guy goes, uh, what song would you like to walk out to? Oh. And uh, I've been asked that multiple times. My answer is uh, play whatever you want. But uh, As long as whatever you want is cherry pie. This time right. I said... Uh, Play uh, Only Women Bleed by Allison Cooper. And, Alice. I like Allison. And uh, Allison Cooper, right. Well, I, I know the more formal. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> They're I, not buddies. If you read his driver's license, it'll say Allison Cooper. And uh, Alice, it's funny, he never gets called Allison. Well, he's trans now. Yes. Mm. So uh, Alice, uh, that's a little known song from the 70s. Mm. It's very slow and very depressing. Indeed. And very, very against Alice Cooper. So you want to win the audience back before you even get on stage? It was a sparse crowd, and uh, I thought, well, I'll just have some fun. And I'm also just having some fun with the 24-year-old DJ guy oh, who furiously had Googling. no idea what that song was. He's like, and, all right, Alice Cooper, going to rock this place. Right. <laughs> he cranked it. And then, <laughs> then uh, the guy said to uh, Jonathan, who was going on after me, what would you like to walk out to? And he went, the same. Yeah. <laughs> to Alice. I like when you got on stage, though, and it was playing, and the audience was like, what the... And then you were just like, let it play. Let it play. Just let it play for a little bit. Can we'll, we have a sample? We'll, we'll play you in. what I walked out to. Next, I've got a special guest all the way from L.A. Very funny guy. Make a lot of noise with a hilarious Bill Dog. <laughs> I just thought, I remember just, we were just dying about it. Yeah, it seems funny, but uh, it's not funny to everyone all the time. <laughs> it's I, only funny to the people who chose the song. Yes. I like how that guy came in, it was like hot crowd, and then immediately you could tell the crowd was getting lukewarm by the second. <laughs> he was like, dude, that was a hot, and then he was like, oh, wait a minute, what just happened? Do you have a song that you go out to? I, I usually come out to uh, Wet Ass Pussy. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, good. Wap. Because yeah. I do a, a bit. <clears throat> a wap. A wap. I do a bit about um about comedians because I started as an actor, you know, and uh, and I realized like I got to stand up later in life, and I I had to, you know, uh, realize there's all these there's all these rules that we have to learn as comedians that literally don't apply to any other job, and mm -hmm. then I I say how you know they brought you up to your credits, right? I mean, they'd say like you know him from the Adam Carolla show right. from everything, you know. I go, there's no other job that does that. Like when you go to the gynecologist. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. he doesn't come out to wet ass pussy. <laughs> no, it's good. It'd be point. appropriate. And then, but that's what it is. And then he, and then I do like him doing like a Cardi B impression and everything. And, um, but yeah, I usually like to start the show or Bad Company. Feels like making love. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of '70s songs about the seed, and having my baby. Yeah, was one of those where he put his seed in her and it's starting to mm -hmm. grow. There's a lot of sort of weird... 70s, 70s were very creepy. Unseemly. Yeah. And then there was a lot of songs about the woman crying herself to sleep every night while he... Rambles. Evidently, there was some sort of running poker game or gin game that never ended in the 70s because the guy was always drinking and smoking and playing in some 
card game every night. And there was this conceit that the woman just sort of had to stay with the guy. The long-suffering wife. Yeah. I don't know many women these days who would cry themselves asleep while yeah. I was out carousing and smoking and drinking and gambling. <laughs> every single... And these are weeknights. This yeah. is every night. I go out with my friends and I and I gamble you and carouse. I smoke and I carouse yeah. and I drink. And then you go into your bedroom and you <laughs> shut your door and then you cry yourself to sleep. But... And I guess it made sense because you couldn't find a new man because every man was drinking, smoking, and well, gambling and rambling. The devil, you know, until the wee hours of the night. Well, dude, we've all seen Goodfellas, Saturday Nights for the Wives, and Friday Nights for the Girlfriends. That's right. That's right. This, uh, yeah, seventies. Uh, known? The whole the theme is just tears and seeds. That's yeah. right. A lot of seeds. How do you water your seed? With tears. With tears. Thank That's a, you. It's a circle of life. Yeah. Having my baby, you can find, but that is equally as creepy when uh, whatever seed he put inside her is starting to grow. They're not even being, it's obviously not ironic. It's not tongue in cheek. It's, they are very serious about their own seed. Yeah, they were like, look, we can write a song about implanting our seed or us drinking and gambling and playing cards and her crying herself to sleep. Or, alternatively, we can write a song about fucking the 15-year-olds. Right. Like Those coming are your into town, partying yeah. with your chicks, banging your 15-year-olds, put them, you know, put, leaving them oh. out barefoot in the middle of town. It's their push fault them out of because my van. they know what you're about. Maybe the daughter is the daughter of the woman that is crying herself oh, to sleep. Maybe no. that's the 15-year-old I'm fucking. I love how they're all the same theme, though. Yeah, people are like, listen, you know that seed stuff's working really good for them. I think we need more bags of seeds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we need more seed songs. I mean, it was like, like that's what it is, or it's like gambling in tears. Like you're right, every every song. It's like how country song. I used to do a bit about how all of the country music is the same. All the men love their wives and they love God, and all the women want to kill their men. Yeah, that's right. That's but fair. that's it. Yeah, and it's like, and that's someone's like, that's really working well for Tammy Wynette. Let's do six of those. Well, she stood by her man for a while, I think. Stand, then, yeah, that was one song, Stand By Your Man, and they had to make that a declaration of like, this is the only song where we're going to stand by our man. Right. Did, uh, and so we were, at, we were wondering out loud about the comedy Chateau, oh, yeah, which you and I to... just noticed, this kind of French Normandy architecture place that was across the street. It's like Brigadoon. Right. It was a suddenly just there. Yes. What, a couple in North of, Hollywood? Yes. A couple of... Couple half a block closer to the freeway, yeah. and we both passed it on the way in and went, What the hell's going on over there? Well, Dawson can tell us what the hell's going on over there because it was uh, there Thursday night doing a set, and uh, you know, it used to be a French restaurant, Le, Le Petit Chateau. Mm -hmm. So you go up on stage and you got to make fun of the place first, Le, Le Chateau de Comédie. You know, mm -hmm. you guys are trying to class it up a little bit. No, it's not, but it's a great. It's a great room. They got two rooms. One's kind of small. Um, and, you know, when you drive by it, there's like a, a castle steeple outside. You know, mm -hmm. it looks like one of those uh, watchtowers mm -hmm. that's part of the building. That's the stage for the small room. So you go up on this stage and you're in this little capsule thing. Is something going on? Uh, you guys are too young to remember, but during the real go-go days of the 80s with stand-up when stand-up started going nuts in like the mid 80s mm -hmm. every italian joint had a open mm -hmm. mic thursday night you know every pizza place as as you know in the early 80s mid early 80s you know leno told me go to the deli smoker and play the deli it's a deli but do stand up there. And then I realized I did comedy at Vitello's on a on a Tuesday night. Dawson was out on a Thursday night at the former former French restaurant doing stand up. Are we getting back into those days where yeah. Ooh, I hope play, so. everyone's opening a stage now? I think they do because when you hear about a new comedy show that's going on, I'm like, is this at a gas station? <laughs> right. Yes. Like, is this at one of those homeless underground or uh, under the bridge encampments? You're like, right. dude, it crushes. <laughs> The yeah. bold people love that joke. The, 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 the crowd lives there. Yeah. Um, but it's like, it's crazy. You're right. It's like every place in town now has a stand-up night. Yeah, I'm wondering uh, what is going on with that. But does that mean we're having this issue with, like, 
inventory. Like we had too much comedy inventory in the 80s. So other places started opening up. It was sort of like saying if there's a line going around the block for every car wash and it would make sense that a lot of places that sold car parts would be doing car washing mm-hmm. in the parking lot. Like, is or was it a COVID thing where people just spread out when you now can work from here or do comedy from there? Yeah. Right. Here's a theory. It's a little inside, but you guys will probably, I'm sure, Jonathan, you'll be able to add some insight. Tons of improv stages in LA or there was until very recently mm-hmm. a lot of them are closing down everyone's closing up shop losing their lease whatever so is it possible that the sketch comedians the improv comedians are now turning to stand up I just think with social media there like when you talk about people who are just like doing it there's so many people that I know that started are doing it as a hobby now or they're sort of like oh I'm getting up I'm doing a st- you know like I'm doing stand up now and I think because of everything that's on social media and the streaming platforms it feels like oh I can do something like that like it seems not necessarily obtainable but it it feels like it's in the palm of your hand like there's all these comedians on Instagram and TikTok oh. but does it translate I, uh, maybe I sound like the old man who's keeping the baseball that comes on my lawn. I don't think so. (laughs) Um, I have a theory, which is, so when I was younger, like we all remember the videotape and the home movies where you'd be walking around the Thanksgiving dinner table and it'd be like, uh. Oh, Aunt uh, Susie, say mm. something. And she's like, I, I don't know mm. what the, I'm not good with, I get nervous. You know, you put a camera in my face, I get nervous. I don't talk. I don't do well in front of crowds. It, it, the, the number one phobia used to be public right, speaking, right? right? Footnote, footnote to that, my mean grandma, not uh, not demure about it, refused to talk on camera. Like if you right. put the camera at her, she'd look away. Like, didn't like the sound of her voice. Well, also, Neither did anyone she was else, defiant. It sounds like. We, have not, we were not able to chronicle her being a bitch. No, <laughs> she would never talk on camera. Yes, I know. So here's what I'm saying. Everybody is now growing up filming themselves, talking into a camera. You know, there's not a group of 13-year-old girls that don't hold the camera mm-hmm. up and do the dance and do the TikTok thing and all that. Now, that's kind of present time, but it, it's going back 15 or 20 years now. Are those people who would have formerly been shy in front of a camera or performing in front of a group or a camera or something like that. Is it now woven into their DNA? And thus we have more people going, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Give me the microphone. Like I'll, I'll get up there because the barrier to entry is not much. It never was, but the barrier to entry was internal Mm -hmm. in the past. Like I couldn't get up there. I'd be so, so nervous. I feel like these people were, we're we're born into a we're filming you scenario now we film people literally from birth and their barrier to entry emotionally is not there anymore i think you're absolutely right and i think um something that captures that brian might agree is the movie eighth grade you have this really Mm. shy girl gucci yeah it's really shy girl shy in life but loves to make the YouTube videos, loves to make the TikTok videos. And so I think you're right. Not only is it for the gregarious, it's for the shy because they're doing this in their own bedroom. Yes. And then this notion that we need to coax everyone out of their shell, mm. I don't know. <laughs> some should stay. I, some should yeah. stay in that shell like I'm Spinal Tap. Not everyone needs to be outside of their shell and tell me about their boring life. It's well, a it double-edged just... sword. They get way too much confidence and yeah. too much positive reinforcement through the telephone, and yes. then they think that translates to the state. So, it, I, yeah, sorry. It's also, I grew up on a steady diet of children were to be seen and not heard. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, here's, hey, kids' table, over there. Zip it. The, gr- the grown-ups down. are not interested in what you have to say. Now we have to hang on every fucking syllable that comes out of nine-year-old Johnny's mouth. I think that has changed things as well. Well, it just seems so accessible. People are already recording themselves anyway and just sort of being off the cuff. And so that, yeah, it's literally just, it's it's like TikTok, but without the phone. Right. It's what's for stand-up. And, and obviously there have been young comedians that have made the transition. But, you know, when you have to get up in front of people who most of the time people follow you, they're your friends. So you're getting, like, all these likes. But going up in front of a club and stand up in front of strangers and making those people laugh and relating to them, I think that's an 
a very different beast. Uh, on a <laughs> totally different subject, but one I'm always interested in is um, patterns and the people that follow the patterns or study the patterns. I'm a pattern follower. So um, to uh, I'll give you an example. I was uh, doing uh, Howie Mandel's podcast before I got here this morning, and one of his young guys in the booth is a flat earther. Oh. And uh, they said um, how he was kind of making fun of him, and he said, like, what, what are your thoughts on the flat earther? Which, which drives Drew nuts. He gets angry mm -hmm. at it. I don't. I'm just like, uh, that's what he thinks. I, I, to me, it's, it's like a Jehovah's Witness or born-again mm -hmm. Christian. It's like, that's what Knock the guy believes. Up. I don't believe it, and I, I think I'm right here, but I don't really need to talk you out of it unless you have some plan of going underneath our flat earth and burrowing <laughs> right. up or something that could disturb right. me and my property values. So um, he was saying, uh, he's a flat earther, and, and what do you think? And I said, well, I'll bet you he's a flat earther, but I'll also bet you that he's one of these guys that believes the Twin Towers was taken down by the government. And the guy went, yeah, I do. Yeah, sure enough. And then I said, uh, I and also can... Uh, bet you that uh, this guy's not taking the COVID vaccine. He doesn't want to get microchipped. And he said, yep. And then how he said, I offered him 50 grand. And he still said no. And uh, I said, I offered him 60 not to take it. So don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a money call for yeah, him. Simple enough. But, but then I, I realized it's a pattern. Mm -hmm. it, you you don't course. think the world is flat in a bubble you think the world is flat and the Twin Towers sure. were taken down by the feds and the COVID vaccine has a microchip in it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a general mistrust of the man, government, society, and it, it's it's an overall it's an overall pattern. Yes, it is. Yeah. And and how he was funny because it never he never connected. It's like, yeah, he doesn't want to take the vaccine. It's like, of course, I know what yeah, you, of course. you, you he must be psychic. Take the vaccine. And so I was I'm a pattern guy, and I realized my 15-year-old son is a pattern guy because um, I said to him, let's go out and have Mexican food uh, last night. And he said, all right. And then he said, uh, I'm at the Y and I'm with my friend. And I said, well, I'll meet you at the place and have your friend drop you off. And he said, uh, fine. So I got to the Mexican food restaurant five minutes before he did. And then he walked in and he saw me sitting alone at the booth. And he said, uh, huh. You never sit on that side of the booth. Mm. And I said, yeah, that's right. And then I said, you know why I sat on this side of the booth? And he said, yeah, because it faces the door yeah, and you wanted in. to see me coming in, but you don't normally sit on this side of the booth. And I said, yeah, that's good. It's good, good that you're a yeah. pattern person. Dad never has two margaritas at home. <laughs> That's right. I, I thought you were going to say um, I had a double, but go ahead. <laughs> why are you sitting on that side of the booth? Do you know why? And he goes, yeah, because 9-11 was an inside job. That's, That's right. right. That's right. No Jews in the building. No, can't be. <laughs> yeah, so you notice that, and but patterns and people and patterns in general are good. It's, it's a good thing to know because you'll you'll know things before they, before they happen. So whether... And and by the way, the number one pattern followers on the planet are like dogs. Yeah. You know, like like hearing the can opener, the electric can opener, or when you come home or walking into the mm -hmm. kitchen or whatever. They are all about patterns. I'm I'm wondering in a weird way, the animal kingdom is more about patterns. Like, you know, if you're a rabbit, and all of a sudden, birds start mm. flying away from the That's canopy. You you're like, I got to get to some high right. ground. Like you're all pattern, and then you become a human being, and you become an adult, and then we try to talk you out of. You can't judge. You don't know. I knew somebody. I knew a mother who was addicted to crack, and she was on welfare, and then she went to Harvard, and then she's now Supreme Court. And it's like, yeah, yeah. But so patterns I be know, damned. You're trying to talk us out of our patterns. Well, the but... reason you're telling the story is because it's notable. It's unusual. Right. Right. And 
I love that you brought up the bunnies and the little prey because there's a really evolved version of this that I just read. This girl who I guess was dealing with, uh, I think she has non, whatever it's called, when she has depression that drugs don't work on you, like resistant, mm-hmm. drug resistant depression. And so I don't know if this works. I don't know where this came from, but she carried one of those dog clickers around, you know, because that's how you train a dog with the mm-hmm. sound. And anytime something really fun or happy or funny would happen, she would click it. Mm -hmm. And she did it so many times. And the point was that she was dog training herself. So if she was getting into that mood, she'd click it and her brain would think, oh, something happy is happening. Something fun is happening. Yeah, it's like Pavlov. It's great. Exactly. I mean, what an idea to do that on a human. So uh, in other news, Chris was telling me that Ricky Gervais got into some trouble over some stand-up he was uh, doing. And I can't remember. Some show I was doing, but somebody was talking to me. Oh, I think it was Piers Morgan maybe brought it up, but he was explaining that the uh, guy who charged the stage at the Chappelle concert was triggered by whatever jokes Chappelle All the jokes. said. And uh, I said, uh, since when does everyone get a trigger? Like, well, you're not allowed to have a trigger. Yeah. Don't You don't get to have a trigger. I, it could be... Uh, it could be hair trigger. You know what I mean? Like, why does everyone have a trigger? I don't. I don't feel like I but have a trigger. Don't the, have a trigger. The fact that why show up to a thing that you know what's going to happen and then pretend like you didn't. It's not like you were blindfolded and like this was the prize of a contest you won. Right. Where you're in the front row of a guy that you believe is adamantly against the way you live your life. You paid right. money for this. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. I think that's. I think that's called being nuts. Yeah. I also. And I'll get to Ricky Gervais in a second. I got some clarity. Tell me if you think this is a power move or not. Okay. Uh, I was talking to Howie. I always talked to him about the Canyon Club and him coming up on stage and getting drunk with us mm-hmm. and uh, his popcorn box right. story. He had a box. Looked like a, I thought it looked like a box of dress shirt comes in filled with popcorn. He was offering everybody. Germs be damned. And he said that, uh, yeah, he was eating at the Wood Ranch barbecue place, and they walked out, and he came to see us uh, up on the marquee, and he just let himself in. And uh, he also noted that he was so drunk (laughs) on Mangria that his wife had got him a golf cart to get from the front door of the club to the car. Good. <laughs> that means you're hammered. 20 yeah. feet. You have to get a vehicle <laughs> to carry you the 28 feet to where the Suburban is parked. Wow. That, that means, or, that, or that's just a good one. Or, ri- or you're just incredibly wealthy. Yeah. Yes, yes. Or, yeah, if the guy at the airport who pushes the wheelchair, if he's waiting for you outside of the club <laughs> to get you to the car. But clarity on that okay. story. I said, uh, so Howie, you went, to, you know, he went from the barbecue joint got himself a big pile of popcorn at the barbecue joint, walked in. He said, no, I went to a movie theater. And I said, uh, tell me if you think this is a power move. He said, uh, I didn't want to watch a movie, but I wanted- Just for the popcorn? I wanted popcorn. Wow. Wow. And I said- uh, Popcorn's pretty great. He said, yeah, I just walked in. I ordered popcorn. They dumped it into a box (laughs) that they used to carry four cups, you know, the cardboard four cupper, four topper. So they just poured it into that, and I walked out. Wow. Now, I don't know why they wouldn't give him a bucket, but maybe he didn't pay and they do the we have to pay for each bucket or whatever whatever it is. But anyway, that was wow. that was his power move. So Ricky Gervais, sorry Chris. Yeah, yeah, so his special Supernature was just released on Netflix just for a few hours today. Already getting a bunch of buzz because of some uh, quote hurtful and graphic transphobic jokes. You want to hear some of it? We'll play sure. more than anything. All right, yeah. let's play a minute of it. The old-fashioned women. Oh, God. You know, the ones with wombs. Oh. <laughs> Those fucking dinosaurs. Oh. No, I love the, the new women. I know the new women. They're great, aren't they? The, you know, the new ones we've been seeing lately. The, the ones with beards and cocks. They're as good as... They're as good as gold. I love them. No, it's the old-fashioned with And now the old-fashioned, they're like, oh, they want to use our toilets. Why shouldn't they use your toilets? For ladies. They are ladies. Look at their pronouns. <laughs> what about this person that isn't a lady? Well, his penis. <laughs> Her penis, you fucking bigot. <laughs> What if he rapes me? 
What if she rapes you? <laughs> you fucking turf whore. So anyway, that's that's a minute of it. Uh, yeah. And also, this is in the wake of uh, Netflix kind of releasing a, a statement to their employees. Like, if you don't like working for us, so be it. Just go find another job, basically. Yeah. So that was a week or so ago. Yeah. I wonder if they're getting out in front of this. They must have known That's what, what the I'm content thinking. was. They, yeah, they saw the edit. <laughs> right. <laughs> they had final we cut. We need to release something. Yeah, that was all. Final cut, by the way, is a trans term. That's right. Oh, that's yeah. right. We, but Jews started it with the Moyles. That's right. Yeah, and then the, the Briss. And uh, the, uh, the prostitutes are called uh, Final Cut Pro. I think they're professional <laughs> ladies. Um, all right, this is all patently obvious shit. You can't. So here's the thing, society. You you can't get into all the pronouns and all the he is a she except for she's got a cock and balls right. and all. You, you you can only do that for so long before comedians are going to go. Ah, I've taken note of this insanity and I'll craft it into something and yeah. repeat it up on stage. But also, it's like comedians we make fun of everything. Well, you know, that's the thing too. It's not that we're like singling out and then everybody is taking attack at something. Like you go on stage any given night, there's like ten comedians or whatever. We're all talking about different stuff. Yeah, I don't feel like any group is is really getting the brunt of anything right now. Uh, listen, uh, when I wrote my first book, maybe it was my second book. I can't recall. I think it was my second book. Uh, there's a call that you always have with the uh, with the publisher's attorney. And the publisher's attorney has to vet everything. And so if in the book, you were talking about a long bus ride you took where J-Lo blew you. <laughs> then they're going to go, did J-Lo blow you? Because if J-Lo didn't blow you on that bus ride, she's definitely going to fucking sue us for saying <laughs> she did. It's an interesting conversation to have. Uh, so you mark off time on the calendar and they go, okay, we got to get on the phone with the attorney. He's got some questions. We have to vet some of these stories or some of these things. And all the guy said to me was, is your family litigious? <laughs> <laughs> Meaning I talked so much shit about my own family that he actually thought my dad was going to sue me. So yes, there's enough shit to go around yeah. everybody. And it goes, that's, you cannot say, so comedy, the comedians get up there and they fire shotgun round after shotgun round of shit that's going in every direction. And the clay pigeons are flying everywhere. And you're talking shit about your family. And you're talking shit about your ex-girlfriend. You're talking shit about your kids. You're talking shit about the president. You're talking shit about COVID or whatever it is. And then you hit one clay pigeon. And that's the trans community. And they go, whoa, shut down the firing range. Like, Shut up, bitches. We're firing at everybody. Well, that's, that's the I, job. Yeah, I think also that that's what helps normalize things. Yes. When you when when everything, you know, is made fun of. You know, it was um, a guy that I know was doing a show and there was uh, he was doing crowd work and there was a guy in a wheelchair in the front row and he didn't he didn't say anything about the guy and then when he was like shaking hands as everybody was leaving, the guy in the wheelchair rolled up to him and he was like, um, "Hey man, I was like right there. Why didn't you make fun of me?" And he's like, and he goes, oh, I didn't want to. And he goes, but dad, but make fun of everybody. You know, like that's what normalizes it. There's, right. a, there's a great Key and Peele sketch about that. I don't know if you guys remember. But there's the guys, he's gay. It's Jordan Peele. He's in the wheelchair. He's all jacked up and he wants to be made fun of. And Keegan doesn't want to do it. And he's begging for it. And he does. And it goes south real fast. It, it'd be worth playing at some point. Um, all right. We have basically what can Adam complain about? to uh, do. We got your calls lined up there. Uh, Jonathan is going to uh, give an assist on that as well. Um, we'll explain the rules of that. It is Paul Giamatti because uh, he did it when we did um, March Madness, mm -hmm. Madness, and it was uh, so funny that we thought, well, why not spin that off into what can Adam complain about? We'll do that coming up next. First, I'll tell you about DR Power Equipment, spending more time at home, step up to real property care. Tackle all your landscaping projects with DR Power Equipment. Go drpower.com. Your one-stop shop for brush mowers, chipper shredders, leaf and lawn vacs, wood splitters, rototillers, and much, much more. And you can check out DR Power's full line of professional-grade gas-powered equipment, plus the latest lithium-ion power tools as well clear field of overgrown brush, including four-foot-high grass and saplings up to three inches thick. 
they got the power to get through it. Or you can trim, uh, mow, edge your uh, suburban uh, lawn and and uh, property. Like a pro, all DR Power Equipment is on sale right now. So just uh, get over to GoDRPower.com. Stock up on your out for the outdoor season. It's coming up soon. GoDRPower.com. All right. Quick break. Back with Jonathan Kite. And uh, what can I complain about right after this? It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam, huge fan. I just got done talking to my dad, who was proudly showing me his business card. And his company requires to put his pronouns under their name. So it says, my dad's name. And under it, it says, dude, bro. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Well, he can stay on at Netflix, evidently. All right, Jonathan Kite has uh, joined us. Now, what can Adam complain about? He used to do it on stage a million years ago. I just go start every show with people shouting out stuff to challenge me to complain about good things. Like puppies and rainbows. I'd, I'd have to turn it into something uh, negative, which is easy for me to do. Just ask my kids. So uh, we had fun when uh, Paul Giamatti joined us. <sighs> Uh-oh. Because Paul's not, never in a good mood. He's cantankerous. Well, well, well. Hello, Adam. <laughs> Today's not a good day for Paul. Uh, not but I'm good. here. I'm here. Yeah, all right. Not a good day. I almost soiled myself on the way over here. Thought it was a shot, but it wasn't. Oh, okay. So you dodged that bullet. <sighs> for now. For now. For I had now. Chipotle last night. Do, there's, I mean, there's going to be a couple more rounds coming. Do you... Uh, Paul, do you have any good days? Because I feel like almost every day is a bad day. Well... Friday the 13th, and usually just about even for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Everyone's horrible day. Somebody, uh, oh, God, was it Rihanna that just gave birth on Friday yeah. the 13th? Big mazel tov. You know Rihanna? I know of her. I know her songs. Mm-hmm. Big fan. Oh, you're a big fan? Of what? Rihanna, absolutely. What's your favorite Rihanna song? I love the song Stay. Stay. I, I want you to Stay. <laughs> I'm mean, having an album coming out, so I don't want to, you know, just that's just a sneak peek. Okay, so you're covering some Rihanna? Most, well, a, a lot of Rihanna. A mm-hmm. little bit of Beyonce, and then some Michael Bublé. Oh, wow, eclectic. Right. Except my version is not feeling good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's Giamatti's way. Oh, God. All right, well, what we'll do is uh, we'll just start at the top, and uh, I'll start complaining. Oh, we have an intro, sorry. Stuff. Forgot the world that. is full of it, and one man can complain about it all. This is What Can't Adam Complain About. I forgot, yeah. Like, I'll bring my bell out. You like a bell? I like a bell because it lets me know dinner's ready. <laughs> all right. Or and I'm out in the field just having a little bit of, oh, Yum! Huh? I'm like that dog you guys were talking about yeah. earlier. Oh, the Pavlovian dog. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. Oh, I'm gonna have some some chuck wagon food. Yeah, out of a trough. You're not uh, vegan or lactose intolerant. Oh, I am lactose intolerant. Or... Doesn't stop me from sucking down a gallon of milk every morning. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's just uh, head to the top with uh, Jeremy, 35 from Utah. Jeremy. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Jeremy? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you talking to me? Mm-hmm. Are, oh, you, are you Jeremy or are you going by Jeremy? I, I didn't know this was going to be live. I was listening to the C. Okay. That's uh, all right. I'm Jeremy. Mm-hmm. What you got? Okay. Uh, nice set of big old natural tan titties. Mm-hmm. Oh, big old oh, set of natural oh, tan titties. All right, here is my problem with a nice big set of natural tan titties. It's not in the not in real time. Real time, big old set of tan natural titties is awesome. But down the road, what happens to the tan titties? So what happens if you notice women that have a great bod and a great rack, especially in SoCal? Catch them when they're in their early 40s, and you'll see that their chest looks like a 
asphalt driveway that should have been repaved years mm. ago. Mm. It's all gatored and checked and freckled. And, they had the, oh, the doctor, dermatologist has to go over it and remove all the damage from all the sun. Ugly chicks, fat chicks, a cuppers, they don't have this problem because they go out like they like their Muslim family escorted them to the beach and then turned around and had them go home. You don't realize how much sun the damage, how much sun damage the titties take because the hot chicks always have the titties on full display. No better place for them than the beach or poolside or the ball game where they're wearing the halter top. Mm. So it's great sailing all through the 20s, maybe into the early 30s. But somewhere into the 40s, all that weird cancerous shit starts showing up right in between the titties. Oh, I, Danim, I know what you're talking about. I look at this every morning in the mirror. Oh, right. oh, oh I got a big pair of tan naturals right here. I can't even wear a V-neck. Oh, really? Oh, I started as a D cup in high school, and now I look like a cow that's on its last leg. Wow. Paul is a thicker guy. Yeah, yeah I got otters. Yeah. Jeremy, you satisfied? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And I just ran a red arrow for you. What's that? <laughs> I just ran a red arrow for you. Oh, too. nice. Oh, hero. Thank you. You're a, you're a hero. All right, we'll pop down to uh, line two. Pete, 48, Washington. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. How about, can you complain about a nice glass of bourbon with a smoke at the end of a hard day. Oh. Mm, boy, that's tough, because there's nothing better than that glass of bourbon and that uh, cigarette. But cigarettes are verboten now. Mm. It's kind of weird. We Bourbon, not an issue. Mm. Like the booze, no problem. Yeah. The cigarettes... You go to a club, I see it at the racetrack. There's always a mechanic or two who smokes at the racetrack. I'll see, you'll see these guys because you'll be walking to the porta potty and you'll see a plume of smoke come out from behind the dumpster. And then you walk around the corner, there's a guy crouching. He's 51 Hiding. years old and he's crouching, smoking a cigarette outdoors. Far from the days when they used to hand you a cigarette to take a black and white picture <laughs> back when you were going into the studio system or something. Now the smokers and especially the people get drunk in the clubs, especially the celebrities. Then they have to go outside because they're drunk and they want to have a smoke, but they don't want to stand outside because the paparazzi's out on the sidewalk. Can you see them go out the side door? By the dumpster. They go by the dumpster and they kneel down in smoke. Bourbon, not the judgment, but a lot of judgment coming for smokers. That's me outside the club squatting there taking a shit while I smoke. <laughs> no, not no, no, we're not talking about taking a shit. We're talking about squatting. No, I'm smoke. just saying I'm down there because it's not politically correct for celebrities to smoke anymore. I'll tell you, the last time I had a, uh, a glass of bourbon and a cigarette was when I turned on the car on the inside of my garage and tried to go to sleep. Oh, oh wow. No, oh, it was not a good day for right. Paul Giamatti. Right. So you just hooked that garden hose to the back of the Tesla and just ran and it just, through the window. The just Tesla. breathe in deeply. <laughs> Wow. Just inhale. Wow, you tried to kill yourself. It's unbelievable. I just wanted to sleep. I wanted to get some sleep. I finally. just wanted to hibernate for the eternity. <laughs> All right, let's Jesus. see. We got uh, line three as we head down here. Uh, Michael, 39, Houston. Hey, man. Hi, guy. Got Hi, guy. I got a hard one for you. The, the best and oldest job. In the world, prostitution. Mm. Prostitution, which now we euphemistically call sex workers. Sex workers. Yeah. They have a union. It's ironic that the, 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 the biggest cheerleaders for sex workers are feminists now. They're like, these women like, should be able to do what they want to do in a safe environment. It, it seems weird. I'm, I'm a little confused by it, but I'm all for above the board. I'm like, go ahead. Have them checked out. Check them for venereal diseases. Let's get rid of the street walkers and the junkies. If it's going to exist, let's just have it exist in a legitimate world. Tax it. Have regulate. Have 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 have, have, have inspections. Go around the world, Fifty bucks plus tax. That's right. Uh, 
So I'm all I'm all for the legalization of it, but uh, the problem is, is it seems kind of like weed. It's like half the stuff is legitimate, and then the other half is laced with fentanyl and coming in through a tunnel through the border with Mexico. So I say, get it all licensed and legalized, and but let's not glorify it. Mm. It's still a woman who was probably sexually abused by her stepdad, who's now making money, not at a Starbucks, but from spreading her legs. The thing I don't like about prostitution is, is I look like every character that doesn't get laid in a porno, <laughs> okay? Mm. I look like the pool guy that's friends with the pool guy that's getting boffed, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. And the thing about prostitutes, uh, I look like I'm the union boss mm-hmm. of this new thing. I'm also a lawyer. I'm also the doctor that checks under the hood, mm-hmm. but I don't get laid. There's I a, never get laid! There's a, Paul, there's a new porn job now, which is the friend of the friend, but that's the guy who's holding holding the camera and talking. Look at this photo of me. I look mm. like I'm jerking off a ghost. Yes, it's That's true. That's a good day. Yeah, I'm like, ah, come on, Casper, get all that ectoplasm all over me. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, let's go to our uh, last call up here. We'll talk to Daniel, who's 35 from Bakersfield. Miho? Miho? <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. All right, uh, power tools. Mm, power oh, tools. He doesn't love power really tools. Tough. Well, I love power tools, but power tools are like children. You don't love all of them. Oh. There's some who belong in juvie. <laughs> They're not all great. There's the high end stuff. You know, Bosch is great, for instance. Uh, Hitachi, strong. Mm. There's some stuff always out of always out of Germany. They just do the best tools over there. And then there's your weird stuff that you get from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is this place where you could go over there and buy a pneumatic jackhammer and a compressor that ran off of diesel for $19. Like, there's not a tool that they have that's over $20. Now, it doesn't work. It's junk. It doesn't last for anything. But you can get it at Harbor Freight. The problem with tools, as I was explaining to someone the other day, When I was poor, I was a carpenter, I bought good tools because a good tool just fits in your hand differently than a junky, cheap tool that you get from Harbor Freight or sometimes even Home Depot or big box place like Sears. So I would buy the good stuff and then my tools would get ripped off because when you're poor, you live in an apartment and you live in an apartment, you pull and there's no underground parking, no secured parking, just park on the street. And then you had that choice after a long day do you chance leaving the shit in your truck overnight or do you schlep all the fucking tools which are covered with sawdust and everything else and literally put them in the living room of your apartment and then schlep them down the stairs and repack them i would get my tools stolen all the time everyone would get their tools stolen all the time it was it's not only it, it sucks to get your backpack stolen. It sucks to get your wallet stolen. It sucks to get your computer stolen. But the tools are how you would make a living, and it was brutal when they were stolen. Yes. I do not like power tools, you know. okay? Because every time I'm trying to satisfy a woman, mm-hmm. she no. brings out a power tool. Oh. And I wish somebody would steal that and let old Paul do, do his job. Mm. Just go to town on that thing like Winnie the Pooh. Mm-hmm. But no, they never let that happen. They don't let this groundhog come go down that hole. They got to bring out the jackrabbit or something else. And I go, all right, Paul's just standing here as an innocent bystander. Oh, the jackrabbit. Yeah. yeah they oh, got... I know them all. Oh, they got them all. I got, uh, my, the lady that I'm with has every single one of them. She's mm. got uh, the jackrabbit. She's got the, uh, the gopher hole. <laughs> She's got, she's got the, the whack-a-mole. Oh, Why, boy. there's a whack-a-mole? Yeah, well, you just, it, it looks like a hammer with a dildo, and you just pound on that thing every time <laughs> wow. it, it pops up. I, yeah, I, I watch from a distance. I'm not allowed to play. <laughs> wow. Yeah, just over here in my ball pit. Yeah, I got to tell you, one of the more bizarre tableaus I ever saw was going to the place where they manufacturing manufacture all that stuff and seeing all the poor put upon middle-aged, squatty Guatemalan women who were sewing pubes on a, like, Ron Jeremy's nutsack as it was coming down a conveyor belt. Oh, I've had that job. 
Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. They, yeah I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a surveyor. I go to the, I take photos of the actual porn star's cocks. Oh, you do? Yeah, with my own camera. It's an iPhone. A, a surveyor. Yeah, call. I go out there. I go, all right, drop your shorts. I get mm-hmm. the old wide lens out. I get really deep in there. Mm-hmm. And then I've got to go in there and describe the porn star's genitals to those mm. Guatemalan women. Oh, it's mm. like the police sketch. Yeah, it's, it's like a game of Pictionary. Mm. I call it Dictionary. Worst job well, just be a thing. for your daughter. Would you rather her be a porn star Go on. or the fluffer that's got to get Ron Jeremy into peak form before we cast his cock in plaster of Paris? At first, this seems like an obvious choice. You know, be the porn star, get paid, blah, blah, blah. But people are watching. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Paul. Paul. Well, I've had both these jobs. <laughs> oh, you have? <laughs> yes. And I was saying neither of them is any good. Uh-huh. Oh. But I would say the worst thing was when I had to go around to the horses mm. and seed them like a 70s song. Oh, really? Just to oh, fill God. those bags. And I had to go down there one by one, sometimes two at a time. Really? I, yeah. Hurt the old wrists. Wow. Hurt the old wrists. So I had to do it with my feet. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, I got to make, make rent. That's right. Paul's well, got to make rent. That was What Can't Adam Complain About. It's been you, a while. Do you have, uh, do you have, uh, having my baby with the weird seed inside you that's... One part of the 70s was Indians crying by the side of the freeway, Billy Jack mm-hmm. getting retribution on the blue-eyed devil sure. who was messing with the indigenous kids, stupid songs, stupid folky depressing weird songs about women bleeding and having my baby mixed in with a lot of doom and gloom about the environment and the pollution and what's coming out of the tailpipe of cars and all that. That was mixed with some sort of funky astrology, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, in the stars. crystals yeah. mixed with, uh, we're going to check the Zodiac sure. sign and, and all that. So that was like one biorhythm wheels and, and, and then health food long before they figured out what's healthy. Well, not only what's healthy, but how to get what's healthy to be even close to palatable mm. for anything other than a goat. Like the bread was, you know, um, unsprouted 14 wheat, had to cut it with a chainsaw, broke apart, you know, unsalted Plus peanut butter with no stabilizer. Yeah. You couldn't spread yeah. it. Yeah. Like it was just, so one half of it was this crunchy granola, super bummer environment, kind of Nixon, Watergate, White House, Vietnam. Everything's earth tone. Every, everything's earth tone or orange, avocado, like uh, like we're all those fucking pure bummer. Just everyone's everyone's taking niacin mm. and seeing how how red they turn. Mm-hmm. There's just weird pseudo science mixed with pure blown bummer. That was one side of it. The other side of it was like disco, cocaine, lavish spending, Casey truckers, and the Casey and the sunshine, truckers taking the law into their own hands, <laughs> and everyone getting hot chicks and cutoffs and Daisy yeah. Dukes and shit like that. Well, guess which side I was on? The first side. I was less, on the first side. The less fun side? I was on the, you know, weird, like, oh, uh, pillows aren't good for your neck because the posture's bad. You're going to have to learn to sleep without a pillow and microwaves will poison your organs. And we have to eat, you know, bean curd all the time oh. because meat is murder. And, and like, carob. And the other half was just out drinking martinis and chain smoking and fucking on a dance floor. I was on the losing end yeah. of the 70s equation. Yeah. There was no room in the middle. Yeah. You were either with my mom with, on a mattress on the floor looking at a biorhythm wheel, or you were at a fucking disco doing a rail and fucking the night away. That was it. Is That's that all we why, had. Is that why you say, said you sleep on your stomach with your arms as your pillows? Yes, I use my uh, arms as my pillows because I have a pillow. Away. 
<laughs> yes. What do you think was more the raised by wolves technique? That's, That's right. right. What generation do we think was more depressing? The se- you've laid out the case of the seventies compellingly. <laughs> I would argue that the early nineties, when I was coming of age, granted mm-hmm. I wasn't about to get any pussy, but <clears throat> AIDS, and AIDS, you, you couldn't do the, touching anyone, a stranger was off limits. AIDS and and the the, the pervasive music of the day was like Nirvana and Pearl Jam. It was very depressing. Rock and roll, but yes. the, 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 you can't. Grungy. You, corporate corporate America sucks. Everything sucks. Well, you knew. See, we didn't have information. We had no information. It was the the world. We will be out of fossil fuels by <laughs> 2092. <laughs> you know, this is circa 1974. You know, and we'll have to be living underground because we're going to have this nuclear winter right. where all the pollution blocks the rays of the sun and nothing will grow. And we couldn't dispute any of it. We were just mm-hmm. like, ah, this is, I guess this is where we're going, you know. At least in the early 90s, you could get some information that may have said, well, you know, they were talking about the Earth ending in the 70s and 20 Here years we there. We're, yeah. we're still in one piece. And at least we had MTV. And the anger that, was that's cool. That's a double-edged sword, though, because the world's a fucking vampire. That's, that's true. Right. But it was the drain. But it was cool. Yeah, it was cool, I, I feel right? like it, it was cool to be angsty and ragey, and like because I grew up in that era too, and I just remember Nirvana and and just thinking like, yeah, things suck, but isn't it great? <laughs> the the so songs sexy. were good. It was like Runaway Train. It's like I'm bummed out now. Bro, I, Runaway I Train. Myself. People don't remember that video. It's just showing missing children. Yes, it's <laughs> exactly. Milk children. Soul Asylum, right? Yeah. yeah, I remember watching that. Going, man, I could go for some milk. <laughs> 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 you know, it's funny. I remember watching it being like, like genuinely being like, I wonder if I know any of these kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let's just watch to the end. Or Yeah. That's the thing. They, they used to have like, remember you get in the mail, like pictures of uh, kids. Of like, mm-hmm. what are the odds that you've seen this child? And that you and just that, carry it around with you. Hold on. Let me just uh, stare at people's uh, children. And are you their missing? And computer digitally enhanced by 20 years looks remotely My like My favorite now. thing about that though was, was like how this person looks older and I'm like, it just looks like a Madame Tussauds sculpture yes. of a child. Yes. Right. Oh no! Turn train. it up. Yeah, it's a great song. They played this at a high school dance of mine. What are you supposed to Dude, do? Dude, this was a lot song? of people's prom themes. Yeah. Looking back, I was thinking back on my junior high assembly in the later seventies, and one of the kids sung "Dust in the Wind." Yeah. Oh, sure, and, Kansas. And sure. I, I remember going, "This is a weird message for thirteen-year-olds," you know. Because Blue, you're my boy. <laughs> if you listen to that song, first off, I hope you weren't. Ex- I hope you weren't expecting me to do homework tonight because I've heard the song. All right, we got more coming. First, I'll tell you about uh, electric bikes, uh, e-bikes. Finally, an e-bike for everyone. Electric bikes, uh, e-bikes start at just seven hundred ninety-nine bucks. Fastest growing e-bike company in the U.S. You've seen these bikes all over the place. They work, and uh, we brought them to the track last time I was at the track, and Sonny was just scooting the entire damn time he was there. Affordable, customizable, the ships for free, fully assembled. Plus, they'll quickly fold in half, so you can throw it. You don't need a truck to get this thing around. You can throw it in the back of your car, stash it even if you have a smaller apartment. So much easier to get around with. Charges quickly and hums like a top you get where you need to know need to go over any terrain including snow and sand cover up to 45 miles and up to 28 miles per hour four to six hour charged batteries hidden away this thing is really the next gen of e-bikes it is electric bikes right dawson join the affordable e-bike revolution go to electric ebikes.com and use code adam to get a free foldable mountain bike lock with any bike purchase that's a free bike lock when you use code adam at l-e-c-t-r-i-c-e-b-i-k-e-s.com all right quick break back right after this I always felt that way about uh, the band U2. It's like we got uh, Bono over there, we got The Edge, and we got Larry. <laughs> totally. <laughs> like that fucking Larry. Bro, Larry. Step get, it up. Step it up. Get something. Yes. Yeah, come, his name is coming soon. <laughs> Jonathan Kite is here. Uh, you can check out his website to find out all the live dates. JonathanKiteComedy.com uh, Chris is getting ready he's fixing to go on his honeymoon in italy Ooh, yeah is that mm-hmm. next week yeah next week i'm out of here what is the what's the schedule going to uh, going to venice 
and then going to Florence, then Rome, and then Sorrento, which is kind of by like Amalfi Coast and Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. stuff, and like Badass. Naples and and that. So I was I was actually curious because I I've, I've been watching all the travel shows and watching Tucci. Mm-hmm. Uh, his uh, his mm-hmm. Italy show, and then uh, of course somebody feed Phil. I watched, I rewatched some of those those episodes as well. And then Parts Unknown with Anthony Bourdain, I uh, I rewatched that as well when he went to Rome. So was it two weeks? Yeah. And uh, so we're thinking you do a Bourdain, right? Okay, Adam, I do an Anthony Bourdain. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm here, right here in a wonderful studio, having a delicious Kirkland purified water which is made from the earth and it doesn't taste like dust in the wind. Oh, Oh, good reference. And I know we're all supposed to universally love Anthony Bourdain, but has anyone really figured out why we need to universally respect and and love him? I told him like it was. I I feel like it's a lot of them, but I I don't know. I, I saw a retrospective on him and, you know, people don't talk a lot of shit after someone commits suicide, but it's like this Universe, you know, in a world where a, a nation is divided over <laughs> almost everyone, the one guy we agree on is Anthony Bourdain. I mean, everyone loves that guy or respects him or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't think I love him as much as other people. With that said, I can see the appeal. He tells it like it is. He's very honest. He's very open with his flaws. You know, he was open about his addiction. Yeah. And he, uh, he seemed incredibly incredibly authentic for better or worse. Maybe you didn't agree with the guy or like what he said, but he, I don't think he ever made anything up. And he ushered in the era of the rock star chef that now mm-hmm. we can't get enough That's true. Of. Yeah, we have a fetishizing yeah. chef. But I feel like he was the most authentic version of that. Like when you see these sort of other, he seemed like the coolest right. version. Whereas Guy Fieri is like a clown. I love me some Guy Fieri. I think I it's I. popular to hate at him, but you're right. I do think that there was something cool about Bourdain. And I think that the fact that he was able to eat and drink and travel, he was sort of like the real life most interesting man. Right. Like he sort of was living a vacation and we were sort of living it through and him. And he would live among, live amongst, but when he, when I, he did his things, he would like sit down in a prayer circle or he did off the beaten path. My, the, my grace lament is he didn't write a book before he died called How I Didn't Get Fat, <laughs> which is like, all you did was drink and eat my way through Europe. Yeah. Um, Somehow was a maybe heroin. Yeah. Maybe it was 152 pounds the book. entire time. <laughs> it's a one word fuck. I was on a healthy diet, I mean, yeah, of heroin and tapeworms. <laughs> yes, I mean he was shredded all he the was shredded. time, and uh, I did see him just eating seen and here drinking. eating a pizza. Right. So uh, sorry, Chris. Go ahead. You're uh, you're leaving on uh, when Monday, Sunday, uh, Wednesday, the first Wednesday. Yeah. Why Wednesday? Well, there's not a lot of flights that leave. Out there, so oh. yeah, so we had to we had to kind of go by whatever we were able to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're we're leaving Wednesday, and I obviously I've never been. I don't really know the language. I don't know what to. You don't expect. need to. I don't. A little Spanish will get by. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I could I could similar, do that. Similar. But I was wondering if Anthony had any any ideas of, or any suggestions of where I should go. Uh, first off, I recommend that you speak Italian oh. and not Spanish to the oh. Italian people, <laughs> because they're completely two different countries with two different foods and cuisines. And traditions. That's good. Point. Mm-hmm. I first, I'd start off in Venice, where th- the city is sinking. So take some photos, mm-hmm. and I would definitely get in the water and try to grab the fish with your mouth in the style of a bear. Um. Then we head down to Florence, where I would just get drunk as I possibly could and try the heroin. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. When I got to Rome, I would not do the American basic thing which is fettuccine Alfredo, which doesn't exist except to lazy, stupid American tourists. Mm. I would go down there, I'd have some espresso, a little bit more heroin, till I head down to Sorrento. You did say Sorrento. Yeah. And down there in Sorrento, I would just get the beef. Oh, so you're not down. getting the fish? Yeah, it's a coastal town. Well, I, he had a lot of fish in Venice. That's true. And mm-hmm. if you're on an all-fish diet, and if, you, if you're a Christian, and it is that day of the week, then mm-hmm. please, enjoy. But mm-hmm. I would say, suck on some beef. So go down to the coast and get the beef, Anthony. Well, th- there's the southern beef is a little different mm-hmm. than in the northern beef. More marbled. Mm-hmm. It's really? a little more racist. Oh, oh. Mm. and you can taste the racism. Oh, okay. So it's like kind of the marbling. It's the marbling. Definitely fat. Mm-hmm. And it has a lot of Wendy's, which I really like, in a big gulper. They're delicious. And I think that they're 90% fat, which I enjoy. Any uh, cultural stuff? We talked about the drum circles and, you know, firing the guns in the desert and sitting out with the indigenous people. Any 
anything in Italy. The indigenous people of Italy are farmers. Mm-hmm. So I say go sleep in the dirt with them. Mm. Like, a, mm. like in the, the grapevines or olives? And- like moles. Oh. Mm. oh, Like a mole person. I dig, dig yourself a little hole and make an Airbnb in the vineyards of northern Italy. I think, I think they're filming Fast 10 out there, not for nothing. But uh, oh, nice. Jason Momoa keeps popping up on Extra in TMZ. And he's in uh, Fast 10, and he keeps sending stuff out from Rome. And I don't know if he's back yet, but that was uh, like as of last week. Yeah, or go the, see Jason Momoa. Or go see before. Jason Momoa. Probably a very exciting thing to do when you're in Italy. Mm. He's... An Italian-looking man, even though he isn't, mm. and sit down and see if you can talk to him about cars. Because if there's one thing that Jason Momoa knows, it's cars and Italy. Mm. Wow. You, you, you ever met Momoa, Anthony? Do you know the man? I've never met Jason Momoa, but I'm a big fan of Aquaman. Oh, you like Aquaman? Yes, because I like fish. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. and, the man, yeah. and the man that can speak to them is one of my favorites. Mm. My favorite line from the movie Aquaman is, <laughs> oh, he's talking underwater. Wow. That is a, I saw it with subtitles, which is the best way to see that film, because it feels like a foreign film when you do it that way, and I saw it in an aquarium. I'm going to uh, ask you to uh, shift gears here. <laughs> Let's just pretend no one's ever heard of Aquaman, and uh, you're Tom Hanks. Okay. And you got a production company. Got it. And I'm coming in with the idea for Aquaman. Okay. And I'm pitching you this feature called Aquaman, and you've never heard of the comic book or the series or the movie or anything. And I'm you're just, pitching Tom to be in it? I'm pitching Tom Hanks. I want your company to produce. Exactly. Playtone Records. Yes. Or Playtone, whatever. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Hey, buddy. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for taking this meeting. Well, happy to see you. Happy to... Take any meeting. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it quick. Okay. I have this killer idea. Okay. You, you know, these Marvel movies and these big tent pole movies, summer movies. <laughs> oh, act- I love Shang-Chi. Huh? I love Shang-Chi. The new Marvel movie. Okay. I thought that was that, uh, I, th- I thought that was that, uh, like sauerkraut stuff that they made in Korea. Kimchi. Yeah, that's kimchi. kimchi. Oh, okay. That's right. his brother. I love her. So... Anyway, these movies are making money hand over fist. You know, all Dr. Evil or Dr. No or Dr. Strange or Dr. Something, Dr. Hook. It's all big money. A medical stuff. professional yeah, of some yeah. sort. But it all takes place on land. Okay. I'm looking at one that takes place at sea. And to be more specific, under the sea. See, my, my guy that I've come up with, <clears throat> his name Aqua. Okay. Because that's Mexican for water. Okay. And then man, because you got to put man, you know, Ant-Man or well, whatever man, you know, Spider-Man. Okay. So, yeah. So anyway, his whole thing. Yeah. He can communicate with fish. And that's that's how he gets the job done. Okay. <laughs> so let's just say. Well, 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 wait a minute. You know, like sometimes you're, you're thinking like, oh, man, I wish I could get. Uh, a grouper to do my bidding? Uh, well, uh, I right, suppose. Bad example, bad example. Wait, this guy, wait, that's all he can do is talk to fish. Well, yeah, but hold on. Okay. It, well, he communicates with them. He doesn't talk, to, you know, obviously. Sign language? underwater. He, Sonar! Yeah, yeah, sort of, you, you know, it's sort of telepathy or something. Sonar, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, How did you get this meeting? Where did I get the idea? No, this... I was fishing with my brother-in-law. Okay. And I was like, I wish I knew what those fish were thinking. And then I was like, I wish I could summon them to the boat so we could catch them. So you could eat them. Well, I know Chet. Well, well... Chet's a friend. Oh, God. Chet set Don't this up. Don't start me on Chet. <laughs> Chet said... Chet. Chet said you were like a father to him. That's well, the, no, actually that's said the you one were thing he's father. never yeah. said. No, he never said that, but he said to me, you are his dad. I, yeah. I screwed that up. He said, I'm like a father the way that Darth Vader was a father well, to Luke Skywalker. Anyway, Chet's, first off, I think the kid's a talent. 
You think he said a what? I ta- I love when he goes in that whole Rastafari oh, thing. It's awesome. Oh, so funny. Adam. <laughs> so Adam. funny. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh man, it, it oh. sounds like just yesterday. I can almost like hear his voice ringing in my head in this Rastafarian. Oh voice. no. Oh yeah. Oh. Big up, big up the whole island massive. It's your boy Chetana coming straight from the Golden Globes. You are know saying. Me feel me father told my expectation and I want to forward come. Big up, tune in. Yeah, he doesn't always I talk hate that, that that's way, his voicemail. <laughs> oh, that was his outgoing. Yes. Oh my God. You're well, at the Golden Globes. Anyway. Well, this, Chet this, set this up. So wow, be, Chet. Come on, Chet. I know you're on a schedule, so oh. if you could just permit me. I've got to hear a story about Airman in a second. <laughs> All right. Well, you um, know sometimes you're at sea. Yes, I for well, ca- cast away uh, Captain Phillips. Uh, I have Greyhound. Been Greyhound was Greyhound. The, the, the Destroyer from World War II movie. You were excellent. In that, well, by thank the way. you. I actually signed out of that film thinking that I was a Greyhound. Yeah, or maybe that it had an ending. Well, uh, all right. Anyway, let, you know what? Forget I said that. You're at sea. Chet put you up to this. Well, no, Chet just opened the door. Oh, Chet. I, uh, I'm in the sea. You're in the sea, and you're thinking, man, wouldn't it be great if you could communicate with fish? You know, like there was some evil doer, like um, you know uh, Kim Jong Un, or you know the guy who runs uh, Korea over there. Yeah. Okay. So, well, let's just say you knew the sperm whale. Okay. Oh, shit. Let's see. And he was at sea. Okay. So, and, so Kim Jong Un has to be at sea. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just throwing some beats out here. This isn't necessarily the script. It's called Aquaman. It's a man who lives at sea. Okay. He looks great, by the way. Okay. And uh, he communicates with fish, and then we, uh, you know, undo evil. Why do we call him the Fish Whisperer? I, I think that... And then he could have a show on Animal Planet where he talks to people's fish. Yeah. Yeah, this is a feature. Right. You know, this so, isn't an Animal Planet type thing. And, 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 and who, uh, who are his buddies? Uh, well, he rides a, a, uh, a seahorse, but, it, but it's not the miniature... How type. big is this seahorse? Well, well, that's the thing. This is a big seahorse. How big? Well, big enough for... You know, I'm, Chet knows Jason Momoa. Oh, Chet! They are <laughs> friends on Facebook. They okay. are not real friends. He told me, look, I'm so well, little... Chet says a lot of stuff. Uh, it was hard to get through the Rastafarian accent, so I, I don't have all uh, well, it's very the official particulars. He's but... never even been in Jamaica! Mm. He's never even been in Jamaica! Uh, well, I'll, all, I'm, all I'm saying is, is Aquaman rides a... a, a it's a giant, a big seahorse, not okay. the kind you no, no, small one. And then um, we could get like a, pff, Amber Heard to like play his girlfriend. What or something. A crap in his bed? I haven't been following the trial. I'm guessing that's a reference to oh. the trial. Oh, I mean, it makes sense underwater because if you did crap on someone's bed, it would just float, float away. Floats to the float surface, away. doesn't it? Yeah. Well. All right. Well, we can put that in. All right. Screw it. I'll do the movie. We'll do Aquaman? <laughs> yeah, why not? All right. I'd like to play the seahorse. You want to play the seahorse? <laughs> yes. I love it. Oh, you love it? Well, I, I do love Aqua and I do love men. Is it uh, Playtone, is it? Uh, yes, my okay. production company. Mm-hmm. Oh, the seahorse is going to be played by Seth Rogen, actually. Oh, what? Well, it's the voice. It's a voice. It's not an actual seahorse. Uh, wow, this is a, uh, whoa, that seahorse is big. I am bigger than I have ever seen a seahorse. Is this like a radioactive thing? Because, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> I, 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 I was thinking maybe the other seahorse could be like Liam Neeson or someone like that. Listen, I don't know who you are, but part of it is because I'm a fish and I don't have a very good memory. Mm. But I can tell you that I am ready to fight for whatever cause you need. I'm on your side, Aquaman. We also got to call out to Mark Wahlberg to see if you know. <laughs> Well, Mark Wahlberg would be tough to be out of breath and underwater. He drowned. (laughs) Oh, you're right, Tom Hanks. Yo, what's up, guys? 
I'd have to play like a seagull or something, you know? Because I could fly up top there, like they did with the Little Mermaid. Mm. So I'd be like friends with the guys underwater, mm. but I definitely have to live in the land. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know, I get yeah. it. I was thinking maybe more Vince Vaughn then type or something. I, uh, I, I, I want to play Poseidon. You know oh, what I'm Poseidon! Saying? Is I, that would that be his dad? Uh, like the dad of uh, like uh, the dad of every of the sea. <laughs> I'm right. like the daddy of the, the. I'm like the daddy of the sea. You know what I'm saying? Right mm-hmm. now, I got like the, all the kind of the energy that I'm going to bring to the table because mm-hmm. I get it right here. The energy, the right here, the, the heart of the sea. That's my heart right here. That's the energy that I'm bringing. You know, <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and scene, nice. the great Jonathan Kite. That's why we wanted him uh-huh. in and in early. All right, uh, get the news prepped, Gina Grad. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you guys about Ultimate Ears. Well, we use tech every day. So many devices out there, but one of the ones we forget about is the ears. What about your ears? And no two are exactly the same. They're all just a little bit different, and your earbuds need to be a little bit different. They need to be custom for you. Otherwise, you're going to have that discomfort. Yui. Fits true wireless custom fit earbuds from Ultimate Ears. Premium sound, all day comfort. The molding process is so fast and so easy. You don't have to have a tech come over and do it like they used to do it in the old days. Guaranteed perfect fit in just 60 seconds. Eight hours of continuous playback on a single charge. Up to 20 hours with the charging case. And if you try them and you don't absolutely love them, They have a uh, 30-day money-back guarantee, plus free shipping, free returns, and a one-year warranty. It's Ultimate Ears, right, Dawson? Use promo code Adam at UE.com slash Fitz to get your pair of UE Fits. That's UE.com slash Fitz, promo code Adam. All right, quick break. Come back and do the news right after this. So we have an update on the airport brawl from yesterday. We mm. know that the uh, the CFL uh, football guy he was arrested and later released. But what? But what of the airplane? Uh, the airport employee? What happened to him? Well, he's been fired. Yeah, um, I, yeah. Feel, I feel bad because I did turn on TMZ last night, and it seems like most of the clips are taking it from him slapping the the football player, but. There's a little more context, which is the football player punched him a bunch of times before the slap. I think that was, uh, I think that was but part of the contextual problem. I don't know. I didn't really even notice who started it. I mean, these are just two dudes brawling. Well, no, <clears throat> I get it's two dudes brawling, but if you start the tape from the airport employee walking up to the passenger and smacking him in the face, and then the guy does the right thing, the the guy got smacked. He goes, "Did you see that?" Right. Then contextually, it seems like the guy just stepped out behind the counter and smacked a passenger in the face. Chris was showing us yesterday before that, I think, what was going on before it. Well, a lot of it started from about uh, 15 seconds in, Ben, where um, the, uh, yeah, it just shows the, the guy walking up to him and just slapping the passenger, the United Workers walking up and slapping the passenger first, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it kind of seems like it just starts somewhere in the middle, so there's really no proof of who started what. But uh, but it was it did seem like there was right, an edit on Twitter. Just give the guy what the I'm upgrade. saying is, is <laughs> the guy throw six haymakers at the guy. I don't know who started oh, yeah. it. I'm yeah. just saying from the tape we're watching, the guy who was the passenger threw six haymakers mm. at the guy, yeah. and then the guy slapped him. If you're going to take if it you, from there, it Well, seems if you look at this, confusing. even in this video, like... Look at the, just the very first frame. It looks like the United Worker gets a slap in there, too. Oh, oh, it started as a slap fight. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's hard. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's impossible, right? at least from what, we've, what footage we have, to see who actually started it. Right, but the editing is pretty selective. Oh, the editing is totally selective. from on, there. Uh, the, the, video, the video that's been shared around on Twitter and All social right. media. It's totally right. selective editing. Right. All well, right. Uh, United Airlines has some things to say about it. They say they do not tolerate violence of any kind at our airports or on board our planes, and we're working with local authorities to Listen, further investigate Listen, I would this hire matter. this guy. By the way, this is That's Spirit Airlines behavior. For me. I know. This <laughs> is not This feels united. very frontier. There's yeah. really nothing united about No, that. they're any, divided any, airlines. They're very divided. Yeah. Yes. I still... Say this guy's a very loyal employee. Mm-hmm. I feel like if the shit went down, mm. I'd hide behind that He'd guy. Step in. Yeah. And, stands uh, up for the brand. He stands up for the brand. That's right. 
All right. All right. Well, we'll we'll keep an eye out for these two. Uh, San Francisco Mayor London Breed will not march in the city's pride parade next month if participating police officers aren't allowed to wear their uniforms. Uh, so CNN reports that the event's board of directors decided on May 11th that off-duty police officers who march in the June 26th parade are not allowed to wear uniforms. Officers are apparently still allowed to participate, but they got to be a little uh, incognito. They might be able to do like a department T-shirt. In response to the ban, the San Francisco Police Officers Pride Alliance, which includes police and fire department and sheriff's office, said on Monday that LGBTQ employees have decided not to march in order to take a stand against the discriminatory actions of the board and not letting them wear the uniforms. This isn't the first time this happened, by the way. Are we still down with the defund and all the fucking demonization of cops? Or did that just blow up in everyone's face? They won't let the gay pride marchers, the gay police officers, wear their uniforms because it's offensive, triggering, blah, 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 blah. Hey, listen, uh, retards who live amongst us in our society, if cops trigger you, move to fucking Canada. I'm sorry. Uh, they're cops. They won't let they're them march with people. their uniforms Correct. on? Yes. What? And this isn't the first time. It happened in New York. It happened in Denver. It happened in Toronto. It happened in Vancouver. Good. Uh, listen, first things first. We have no We have no idea what these handful of ass wipes are getting us into. We have no fucking idea. It's just like shut the schools down for a year and a half. Fine. Things are okay. Check with me in a few years and see how things are going. Demonizing cops. It's getting cops to retire early. Who the fuck would want to sign up to be a cop these days? Would you want to be a cop in San Francisco or L.A. or Chicago or New York? It'd be like, fuck that. We are going to find such a scarcity of cops. And then it's going to be some weird self-selecting group where right. normal people go, fuck that. Whose wife is going to let them attempt right. to be a Who's cop now? No, up. nobody. Then we're just going to get the fucking worst of the worst. Then we're going to have to lower our standards because we're going to go, well, this guy was dishonorably discharged from the Marines and he did try to stab his <laughs> commanding officer. But we're just short on willing. The academy's half full. Like we're gonna have to start taking guys with priors and mall cops. uh, We got a good Paul Blart. It's gonna fuck our shit up. There's going to be more crime, more violence. It's happening. They're yes. telling people not to wear their expensive watches in broad daylight. And all the people that you claim to care about are the ones who are going to get killed in greater numbers, which is already fucking happening all around the country, or at least in the big metropolitan city. So good fucking luck. Just move the fuck on, everyone. Cops aren't the problem. Move the fuck on. Let them... And okay, then we'll, we'll live in a world where the cops just pull out, and then we'll see what goes on in said said cities where there's not a police presence. We did that when we were establishing territories in this country, and right. it was pretty violent. Yes, we need cops. Stop demonizing. Them. Let them all dress like Serpico undercover. Mm-hmm. Plus, well, let me make the counter argument: the greatest hero to the gay community. I mean. Harvey Milk, sure. fine, Big and deal. many many other notables, but the village peoples at the mm-hmm. top right. Come on. of Mount Rushmore. And who's gay, in the village people? A cop. Yeah. By cop. Let's at least, look, can we compromise? <laughs> Can they dress like the bike cop from the village? If your shorts, you know, in like in, in um, religious schools, that your skirts have to yeah. be a certain length. Yeah. They've got to be a certain short. Right. Yeah. yeah. The short short shorts up. Within eight f- inches of the belt buckle. Yeah. We can't have the collar all buttoned up. No. You got to have it no, down to the tie, navel. It's got to tie. Tie in a knot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tie in a knot. I, I love it. I think the village person <laughs> cop wore pants. But oh. there were like, there were cop, there were tr- like I jumpers. Think, yeah, jumpers. There were like trooper. Yeah. I'm not happy trooper, about this. Like riding pants with the high boots. Now we got to say. I wish they were jorts with the, with knee high boots. Yeah, mm. shorts. What's the difference between a jort and a shan? Uh, Shans. <laughs> <laughs> Very similar. Oh, oh, he's a cool guy. Oh, right. dude. White oh. pants. This guy looks like a, a, he looks like he's an extra in police academy. He wants you as a new recruit. He was the straight one of the village people. Oh, yes. Oh, well, that's what he says. I mean, maybe back in the 70s in his community. <laughs> There's no way to know. Fuzzy, yeah. But he says he was the straight oh, one. Okay. You sure. can You can look it up. Um, so... <sighs> I would like to heal, and I would suggest this is sort of the ambassador that could bring the gay and the straight together. Let the cops march. 
here's the template. It's the bike cop. That guy. From Village People. Yeah. yeah. And you stay in your uniform. We're just going to unbutton it down to here. And we'll put some boots on. Was the whole point, I'm looking at a picture of all the village people, um, was the whole point to represent the most masculine men in all of their most masculine industries, but then sing YMCA? Because we have a cowboy, a construction worker, a cop, an Indian chief, a leather daddy, and a Marine, maybe? Uh, The construction worker, I think comically was... He wore like a white hard hat, like he worked mm-hmm. for the Bell Company. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I wore construction. Nobody wore white. He, he he worked like he was a cable guy or a Pacific With a Bell guy. Lightning bolt on it. Uh, the light so electrician. Oh, he was an electrician. He was an electrician. Just on a wire. I'd like to take a good look at the electrician from uh, the village people because there's a different set of tool belt. The tool belt is different. For oh. the electrician. Oh, you want to see if it was a I want, to, I want to know if he was certified. <laughs> yeah, if he was bonded. Yeah, exactly. I never saw the guy's license number. No. Yeah. He has a I tape want to measure. know what's on that tool belt. Yes, that's a good point. A little couple jackrabbits. Yeah, some uh, lineman dykes, perhaps. Right. And we got to see that tool he belt. Was, I, he was. <laughs> well, that was a different cowboy than the one you just had up a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Did they replace the cowboy? I bet there was like phases. Menudo. Yeah, they went to face. He was more right. of a cow poke. Yeah, see, John Menudo, you would you would age out, and in Village People, you would AIDS out. Oh, my God. That's really too soon. <laughs> too soon? Okay. That's a joke. It was like Menudo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when they just kept replacing members as that's they got right. too old? Correct. That was the joke. Yeah, that's what... Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. Um, he looks like he has a hammer, a wallet chain... Yeah, he does. ...and uh, a tape measure. All right. And unclear what he did. What does that but do for Not electric. Yeah. All right. Anyway, the uh, goofballs David. in San Francisco are making a statement by saying they don't like the cops because they, everyone feels threatened by cops. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and a hole in the crotch. Is that standard for electricians? That chapsy or? No, it just he's been working hard and the thighs are rubbing together. Mm. I, I, I'm also. He, was, he wasn't grounded. We had a guy. He's climbing those poles. Yeah. We had the guy yeah. who was the military guy. Then yeah. we had the cop. A stolen valor, dude. Yeah, I, you're not supposed I, to do I can't that. even really remember the military guy, the Indian chief and all that. The one guy was just a full-blown leather He's homo. a leather daddy. Yeah, just... Well, he, he was but, a, a bar owner. But what I'm saying is, it's like, most of the other things had a profession right. attached to it. Uh, not his. Dom. Sub Dom. Crank dealer. Yeah. What's the, the chief's profession? He's paid by the tribe? Yeah, oh. I think okay. so. You take a tithing. He's a lobbyist in Sacramento. Right. He owns a casino. <laughs> yes, he's a dealer. Yeah. They had, um, yeah, the leather guy kind of reminds me, Dawson, you ready? Beastmaster. Love it. Remember the, the gay guards who would just yep. chase Proto and Toto around? Kodo and Poto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the ferrets, bro. Proto. The ferrets. I love yeah. it. They were just gay. There wasn't yeah. anything about them. I He, he kind of... God, that was a must. This a mustache. guy looks more nuanced yes. than Beastmaster. Sorry. Anyway, all right. Good luck, San Francisco. I'd be shocked if you told me that he was the straight one, but I'd love it. Chris, I'm blow look your it mind. up. I think the black cop always yeah. said he was straight. I'm yeah, gonna blow your straight. mind. He, They're he, all straight. So oh Victor God. Willis is the black cop. He was married to Felicia Rashad for a oh, while. Oh shit! Whoa. Now he's married to uh, no. now he's married to a woman named Karen who's a lawyer. Oh, mm. okay. You don't get well, straighter than Felicia Rashad or Karen, the lawyer. That's right. That's exactly Super right. Super straight. Well, I'm glad you brought up a lawyer. Because, he must have yeah. went. He must have agreed to be in the village people with this caveat. Like they're like, he had to be like, he, you know, he was probably obviously he's a good singer. Mm-hmm. He's the guy who's doing all the heavy lifting. Right. They're all back there and they're fucking chaps and feathers <laughs> doing the dance and everything, but. He's up there singing. Right. You know what I mean? He looks like their security. And he probably started off and probably had a few gigs. Like, I can, uh, you know, I'm I'm supposed to go on tour with Peaches and Herb. (laughs) You you know what I mean? He probably had some stuff also that, you know... The fifth dimension is going to change your name to the sixth dimension, yeah, yeah. and they're going to add me. Right. When like, Chuck Berry came through town, he played bass. Yeah, like he was doing some singing, yeah. probably had some offers, and then they came to the him with the, with the village people. Uh-huh. And it's like, what happens? You and a bunch of gay guys just mince about on stage. And then he was like, well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm straight. I don't know if I like this. And then he probably had this thought. 
oh, more pussy for me. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of girls in those shows. We ain't going to be fighting over it in the tour bus like all the other bands. That all that pussy will be for me. But then all dudes showed up to the concert. And he, was, and, he and then, signed the contract. And 12 year old girls. <laughs> right. that's, that's all they, that's all, the only one who would go to a village. Yeah. yeah what so, was that guy's story? So he, he did, uh, he was lead at background vocals. So he was hired just to sing background vocals for one of the albums, early albums. And they loved him so much. Like, ah. So one of the guys said, I had a dream that you were our lead singer and we went really big. So Willis agreed to join and wrote songs like Macho Man, yeah. YMCA, In the Navy. The big West. three. He's the guy. Yeah. I mean, so, those are. <laughs> yeah. He's a village person. Yeah. He's a village person. So, and then they, they uh, in 1980, they were preparing for a movie called Can't Stop the Music. That's right. And then Willis left the group before the movie came out. Uh, he went solo. Oh, and the village somewhere. people had never had another big hit Aww. after he left. Oh, oh, man. That got sad fast. Go West. Yeah. I forgot what a great song that is. Yeah, it did come were, back in and there, were, there was Can't Stop the Music and Xanadu. What's, I don't know, Can't Stop the Music. It was a Village People movie, and I, I was was then Bruce Jenner in that movie, in the shortest Daisy right. Dukes ever made. Was what? Oh yeah, yeah. I think Bruce made your parents. Yeah, Bruce made. If you find a picture of Bruce in that movie, you was will, this supposed to be like a Hard Day's Night type movie, or like an like a Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park? It was type more movie. Kiss goes to. Six Flags Over oh, wow. Boringville. I think the aspiration was hard days. His shorts had less fabric than your old bras. Wow! For sure, 100%. No, no doubt. Yeah, when you're making cutoffs and the cut wow. starts higher than your nutsack, <laughs> Whoa. that's... <laughs> is, is that the goot next to him? <laughs> Steve Gutenberg. That's it right. It is goots. Oh, man. We need what a, a scene from Can't Stop the Music. What is... What, we're, what we're, is... We're getting it. Oh, and that's What's-Her-Name in the thing. Yeah. That's Ooh. the French restaurant Dawson performed at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what he does. That's swishy. Who knew they could act as well? So was Wait, it... hold on. <laughs> was that black man not the cop, but just a black actor who they told to grow a goatee like the cop? Yeah. So we would think it was him. What a miracle never I just like the amount of shoulder acting he's doing. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of shoulder acting. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ray Simpson, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Oh. Did Bruce pick that outfit? But I, I'm seeing Felicia Rashad actually was in there to playing his girlfriend, too. Oh. Oh. Bruce Jenner looks like he's turning into the Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The shirt's Hulk. He's just hulking out the of shirt. that thing. Oh, sorry. When Willis left the group, Felicia quit the movie and was replaced as well. There you go. Oh, he's she's, Bruce Jenner banner. She <laughs> stood by her man. Wow. Good for her. I got to see this movie. Oh, you got to see this, this movie. This looks awesome. Oh, yeah. And l- listen, while we're at it, might I add to your uh, list of movies to watch? Mm-hmm. Can't stop the music. Xanadu. I've seen Xanadu. But have you seen Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band? The movie? Yes. Yeah. No, it's, it's fucking abortion. No. So, slow your roll. <laughs> Start. Watch your tongue. Starring <laughs> Peter Frampton. Wait. What? And Aerosmith. And Aerosmith. What? I don't know what you're talking and about. And maybe Alice Cooper, I can't remember. Who was in Quadrophenia? That wasn't Frampton. Was the Who? It? No. Okay, sorry. No. no, no, Tommy. 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 That's who the Who. Tommy? Tommy was Tina Turner? Ro- Roger Tina Daltrey Turner was and Tina Turner, oh, okay. and then the other Who's. Oh, God. I thought for some reason there was an actor in the Who's Who. Oh, they're. Th- that was. What's his name? Daltrey? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Anne Margaret. Aha. Uh-huh. Anne Margaret was in. Tommy, Sergeant Pepper is um, it's it's a tough watch. The movie George no, Burns. No what? Yeah, he's um, not Mr. Is he Mr. Kite? Yeah, he's the band leader, or whatever. Or yes, yes. A it's, spry it's, eighty years old. It's in a crazy. Movie? You find the trailer to that nineteen seventy eight. It was like a wide release movie. Oh, oh yeah, well past their breakup. Like this was a resurgence attempt. Wow, I had no idea. Yes, it was very bad. Super bad. Wow. Incredibly bad. I, Chris will find the trailer. I know a lot about the Beatles. I I've never I never knew this was a movie. This so is I can't not wait. really acknowledged by a lot okay, of Beatles purists. I see. This is okay. also back in the day where like, hey, Peter Frampton's got a double live album, it's on fire. Yeah, Put go him in, for it. I'm leading them have the lead in the movie. 
where she was sitting on the bed with Roller Girl yes. and they're both all yeah. beat yes. down. Yeah. Their best ideas ever. We should go to this college. We should be a idea. lawyer. You're the best mom. You're, you're the best. best. You're really smart. We'll, we'll get Sergeant Peppers and we'll get <laughs> Peter Frampton and, and uh, we'll get the guy with the silver hair and the arrow through his head. I can't remember to call his name. And the, we'll get... Uh, well, well, uh, well, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes! And you're like sweating and tank. That's all coke. Is this? It's all what, coke. Is this where Elton John's dog shit cover of uh, uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? Yes, came from? it must have been. Oh my god, this is a real, real, real. Yeah, the pitch nightmare. for Aquaman was coke. <laughs> yes, that was just, just, yeah, yeah. This is a bit, yeah, weird movie. It was. It look and also. If you watch it, going. you'd feel like you're high on coke. Yeah. This is all coke driven. Steve Martin. I don't know who Paul Nicholas is. Aerosmith. Alice Cooper. Yeah. I knew Alice Cooper was in this somewhere. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Donald, Donald Pleasance. Pleasance. Bond, Bond villain. And also uh, Dr. Yeah, Loomis from uh, Halloween. Oh, Halloween, wow. yeah. That's who he was. That's yeah, Donald, Donald Pleasance. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that there you go, Gina. Awful. Get on that. Uh, gotta get on it. That though. sucks. So gotta see it. Okay. Um, if we're talking about stuff, well, you that... can say what you want about yeah. that film, but if you're throwing a party, yeah, I put that on, and you got the sound down, yeah, and you got the tunes cranked up, yeah. but you've heated up the 65 sure. inch plasma that's yeah. hanging in them, put that shit It'll on. Blow people's minds. No, that's a good idea, especially a coke party. Yeah, sure. don't awesome. want Steven another Tyler? coke party. <laughs> They'll do. Yeah. They will get it. If we're talking mm-hmm. about horrible things that happened surrounding the Beatles that never should have happened in high school, we had some theater banquet, and you're supposed to dress up in like a suit and tie or a dress. This is how I dressed oh. up for the banquet in the theater department because that was the kind of gal I am. Ben, you have the picture. As one of the Beatles. Yeah. I did. I my mom had this Plays drawer. Please be Pete Best. My mom had this drawer full of old wigs, and I found one. And then the neighbor lady, we convinced her to make my outfit. Wow. And then I convinced three of my other friends to be the rest of the Beatles. Remember when there was a neighbor lady you could count on? Yeah. Yes. So that was me as Paul. Oh wow, no. that was cute. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to look approach... at the mop top. Yeah, that's the wig. That's the wig. I'd like to approach <laughs> one of my neighbors and just go, "Hey, my." Daughter needs yeah. an outfit. Yeah. You got Four the sewing machine out. Yeah. Yep, fired up. <laughs> He'd be like, what the fuck <laughs> what the are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Didn't you borrow my weed whacker like four years ago? Yeah, yeah, but let's focus let's on focus the on outfit. what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> I see the sewing machine in the background. And it yeah. looks like there's fabric already in it. Yeah, I'll provide some of the fabric. <laughs> I've seen your curtains. I know you can do this. <laughs> is there Joanne's around here? There always There is somebody in my neighborhood that I had. I went to see it for Halloween a few years oh, ago. wow. <laughs> and I... And I uh, had this so woman who, who made like the biggest bow you've ever seen for, for you, me. for me, a oh. neighbor lady. I swear. Oh, so it's still alive. It's still alive and wow. well. That's great. I swear to God, two years ago. How did that conversation, so how did you broach that? I had a downstairs her? neighbor and I was uh, going door to door, letting them know about other things about me. No, no, no. I was just, um, I, I let the, uh, the downstairs neighbor at the time I said, Hey, I need, um, do you know, can you do this? Or do you Hello? know anybody can do this? And she goes, literally there's somebody down the street that can do this. And so I went over there and I was just like, hi, you don't know me, but the, did, we got to introduce Did the husband way. answer the door like, oh, Jesus, another Sia bow. Yeah. Marge, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was like, I'm... I told you once the word gets out. <laughs> you got to start this, charging. You put the saucer milk out. You get all the stray cats. I just said, don't put the Sia bow out. I was like, like, you're the woman. Fucking everyone's going to be banging our door down. <laughs> and she did it. And it was amazing. She made you a giant Sia bow. Huge. Wow. Can't you just go to the so, Lexus dealership and ask them? Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't. No, there wasn't like a Toyota-thon or a Lexus-a-thon, yeah. whatever happening. They keep those. Those are pretty hard to get. Harder Happy than you Honda think. days. Yeah. 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 And that's more of a holiday bow. You yeah. need a yeah, more vertical really bow. I need, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a bow tie that she has <laughs> repurposed as a hat. I'm going to go ahead and assume this is somewhere on your Instagram. It is absolutely on my Instagram. And uh, it's me in the full wig and the full bow oh, and that's everything. great. Yeah. Well, let's talk about movies. Um, because there's a movie, Beloved. Many years people have been asking, will there be a reboot of some kind of sequel? Will we ever revisit this? Rob Reiner has always said no until oh, now. Stand by, me. by us. For, oh, you guys. Princess Bride. You guys. Harry Met Sally. For 40 years. They did it. No, they didn't. Yeah, no, 40. 40 year anniversary, 2024, there will be another Spinal Tap. 
Oh. Michael McKeon, Christopher Guest, Harry Uh. Shearer, new film that's being referred to as Spinal Tap 2. I'm selling my shares. Oh, uh, the, Reiner says the full, just so perfect. The full screenplay is still in development. Uh, did offer a glimpse at the storyline they have, um, but they said they're basically going to pick up where the flailing band left off 40 years ago. I'm watching. Me too. I uh, love the first one so much. Now, so here's the thing about sequels or the next season or whatever. When we did the man show, it was me and Jimmy and Danny Two Sheets and all the writers we mm-hmm. hired and all the people we wanted to work on and everything we did. And that was the first four seasons of the man show. Then we left. <laughs> so then you can go, well, what's the fifth season going to be like? And if the answer is probably not so good because we all left. Mm-hmm. But if you said, well, we'll take 10 years off and then come back or 40 years off <laughs> and come back and do a fifth season, the man show would probably be pretty good right. if we all came back. Yeah, they're yeah. all coming back. So if they're all coming back, I will definitely watch. Absolutely. Me also, too. it's got going for it the fact that back in the day, it was rare. It was the exception to get a good sequel. Not better, just even mm-hmm. good, a uh, worthy mm-hmm. sequel. And nowadays, it's rare to have a bad sequel. Are you telling me that uh, the Yellow Submarine did not involve any of the Beatles. I'm I'm almost positive that they're not they're not a part of it. The, the movie, the cartoon movie, at all. Really, that movie when I was eight kind of gave me nightmares. <laughs> the Blue I, Meanies. The Blue Meanies. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Weird, and and it's weird. It's weird when you're eight, but you can still feel like a weird drug mm-hmm. influence. Like, oh, something's but, wrong right here. Yeah. There's a lot of cartoons. I feel like at that time. Yeah. Uh, remember that cartoon Wizards? Mm-mm. No, oh, it was crazy. It was about these like like Lord of the Rings type because Hobbit oh. was really in fashion, you know. Sure. And, and it was um, it was like the 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 woodland creatures versus this wizard and his the the bad wizard. His guys used machine guns. Jesus. And it was about war. And it's this crazy thing. And Mark Hamill is one of the voices of it. It definitely looks like it's from the era that it's from the 1970s. Is uh, so are the Beatles involved with Yellow Submarine? I I can't tell because. W- some say live action, some say cartoon. I'm not totally sure what we're talking about. If you look at the cartoon, yeah, this is the animated cartoon. film. Okay. Yeah, of course yeah, they yeah. did the album Yellow Submarine. Right. But yeah. This but this, right but it also says live they, action. They show up at the end, Chris said, they didn't want to do it originally. Then they hear So something. what they wanted to do is like they did not want to originally be in it, but uh, then they were so impressed with the film that they were like, okay, we'll do the voices now. But then the voice actors were so good that they... Uh, you know no, they that did? they kept them. That's right. Because you they... know, you know what they did. Mm. They went full Vin Diesel, Fast and Furious three. Okay, explain or four. Or explain two. for for Jonathan. He was not going to be a part of I it. I know the Tokyo Drift. And then they paid him a kajillion <laughs> dollars so to like show up in the parking structure. Oh, I know it. He well. was so impressed by the worst yeah. offering of Fast and Furious <laughs> ever. Maybe there was a little payday for half what? a day's worth of work for Vin that he showed up like by the toll gate in the parking structure, did a cameo, and then then left. So impressed yes. with the I bag of cash they gave oh, us. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Gina, let's bring it home, baby girl. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina, that was the news with Gina Grad. Yeah, that was Tokyo Drift. I think he showed the third one. Yeah, I'll Mm -hmm. believe you. In the parking lot, just like I, I got a lot of money to be here for (laughs) thirty seconds, and now I'm fast and furious out of here. But uh, Vin. was it uh, uh, Justin Lynn? Lynn? Justin Lynn. You, a lot of a lot of rumors. She sent him packing off the set of Fast Ten. I sent the rock packing. I sent Justin Lynn packing, and I sent my trainer packing. Oh, you didn't didn't uh, keep I'm, in the same kind of shape, huh? I'm looking more like Vin Unleaded. Oh, yeah. than Vin Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, but you're still you're big in the family, right? I think that's kind of the central theme of the series. I don't have any friends, Adam. Well, no, you're not married or have any kids or anything like that. But I'm I saying the part family. part you play is a fam- family, right? Yeah. Family. I own uh, only family businesses. Hey, Didn't you, oh, ben, can ahead. we? Just a suggestion, but I follow the series closely. Uh, <clears throat> you know, they have coaches for like 
dialects and, mm. and accents and things like that. Yeah. Uh, do they have a how the fuck to drink a Corona Coach <laughs> where you could like drink a beer like a normal person instead of like the way you're the one ring you're talking the about the thing. family? I like to hold the time on the end. So I don't warm up the corona. Oh, oh. Good point. there's a method to his madness. See, you got a built-in koozie. It damn right I do. <laughs> I like that there's a beer koozie and a jacuzzi. Yeah. Jacuzzi's to make you warm. Mm -hmm. Beer koozie to keep, keep it cold. cold. Am pop. I right, people? <laughs> hey, hot dogs <laughs> coming eight pack with the puns. And Bob Cousy. And Bob Cousy. That's right. The Celtic legend. I tell you, he can play today. Am I right, Brian? That's right. He got his skills transcend time and space. He'd be shooting that underhand three today, God no problem. Right. God damn right. <laughs> Bob Cousy's not a friend to me. He's oh, he is more, He's more like family. family. Lockdown defender. <laughs> All right. Uh, Denver, I'll be there June 23rd. I'll be speaking at the, this year's conference, and uh, it's at TOS.com, and you can check that out. Use the code uh, Corolla, get 15% off. Also, uh, then Comedy Works South in Denver. That'll be 24th, 25th. Sonny's got his ticket, so he's going to be working <laughs> the merch table. You can all see that he'll, he's now taller than all of you now. Jonathan yeah. Kite, yeah. the website, jonathankitecomedy.com is where you go. And he's going to be in Kansas City June yeah. 2nd through the 4th, the Comedy Club of Kansas City. Go to amcrow.com for all the live stuff and check out jonathankitecomedy.com. Until next time, Adam Crow with Gina Grad, Ball Brian, and Jonathan Kite. Say it. Mahalo. There's a, Paul, there's a new porn job now, which is the friend of the friend, but that's the guy who's holding the camera and talking. Look at this photo of me. I look like I'm jerking off a ghost. Yes, it's that's true. That's a good day. Yeah, I'm like, ah, come on, Casper, get all that ectoplasm all over me. Oh, boy. <laughs>